Skylar, do you think uh, we're ready to get started? Yeah, let's get started. Thank you everyone so much for being here tonight. What an incredible choice you've made. It's beautiful outside. I hope you did enjoy the, the weather today, the sunshine. And we are so, so grateful that you are excited about the citywide plan and that you're here to learn a little bit more about ways that you can get involved in this plan. Thank you. We are grateful for you for being here. Uh, what our format tonight is we're going to have about 15 to 20 minutes for a super quick overview about the citywide plan. I'm sure if you've made it this far, you've probably looked a lot on our website, but we thought it would be helpful for us to have a lay of the land of all of the information at one time, sort of level set, and then we'll open it up to a broader sort of Q&A. If you have questions throughout the course of the presentation, please do drop them in the Q&A. We know there's a lot of people on the call today. We may not be able to get through every single question, um, but we will try our best to aggregate sort of similar questions uh, together and answer them during the Q&A portion of our evening. I'm gonna kick it. Um, my name is Skylar Laramore. I'm on the policy team within the mayor's office and I'm one of the members of the We Will Chicago planning team within the city of Chicago. And I'll kick it to my colleague, Kathy Dickett to introduce herself as well. Hi everyone, Kathy Dickett. I'm in the Department of Planning and Development and I'm working with the mayor's office and we will be working with all agencies on this plan as we move forward. So I think we should just get started. Yeah, we can move over to the next slide, Kathy. All right, so why plan now? In the, still in the middle of a pandemic, why are we thinking about a citywide plan, this ginormous undertaking? Um, the map says it all, right? We know that this is a really critical moment for our city uh, with the dual pandemics of COVID-19 and structural racism that have been amplified and revealed even more so during this crisis. And we can imagine that the map on the right-hand side of 2017 has only been made more stark as families and communities, particularly Black and Latinx communities, have been hard hit during this crisis. And we know that systems and policies have contributed to these maps as we see them today. So we know we need to interrogate and rethink those same systems and policies in order to reverse this trend and create a more equitable city for the residents of Chicago. So as the city is starting to reopen and the vaccine is enabling more people to do things they've not considered for a year, we really think this is a critical time for us to build a city that's more resilient in the face of future shocks and stressors in the way that centers justice and equity. In many major metros all across the country, citywide plans are a really common practice. Chicago has not had a plan since the 1960s, which is honestly very rare. So this is a true rare moment for us to really look ahead to the next 10 to 20 years to the Chicago we wanna to build together. Next slide. As some of you might remember, this plan actually launched in 2020. So the mayor's office and the Department of Planning and Development completed a pre-planning outreach process that involved talking to over 250 Chicagoans from all across the city to shape the broad framework of the citywide plan. So that's everything that you see here on the slide in front of you. We have our pillars, which are really the North Star for our plan that we're going to be testing everything against. We're going to be defining equity and resiliency together. And we'll then say anything we're working on, how is it advancing, creating a more equitable and resilient Chicago? Our themes are really the roadmap for our process. Think of these as sort of the values that will drive and guide everything that we do from the work within the research team to a neighborhood scale event that you'll see in the course of We Will Chicago. And lastly, our pillars these are really the key quality of life drivers that will be addressed throughout the course of the planning process. So many of you, you know, you're here because you're interested in the research teams. The research teams are going to plug into individual pillars of the plan and the whole plan we hope will speak to quality of life for residents in Chicago by touching on all of these topics. I do want to highlight a bit about the themes on the right hand side because I think it's very important to understand our overall approach to the citywide planning process. So historical reckoning and trust building, what does that mean? It means seeking to understand the legacies of past 
plans and policies that have harmed communities, particularly and namely communities of color, and policies that have benefited some communities and have burdened others. We need to acknowledge that there's also a history of broken relationships and trust between communities and the city as we embark on this work. And that's something that we need to be real with as we're seeking to build new relationships and trust through this container of the citywide plan. Next, we need to build on existing work. So we know that in communities all throughout the city, there have been high quality neighborhood level plans that have you put so much effort and work into making them successful. How do we build on what has already happened at the local level and also what's already happening on issues such as advocacy for lifelong education and transportation and infrastructure? We're not starting from scratch. Systemic evaluation of equity impacts. What does this mean? It means that you know we can't just talk of a big game about equity, but we need to be thinking about how we Im embed equity into the way that we are making decisions as a government, and ideally the way that all across sectors, we are making decisions as well. So some of you might be familiar with the framework of a health and racial Im equity impact assessment to look at any plan and policy and to really think long and hard about who is benefiting and who is being burdened along lines of race, gender identity, disability, et cetera. Um, accessible and meaningful community engagement. What this means is meeting people where they're at. We're gonna implement an artist organizer model, which I'll talk a bit in a moment, which is an opportunity for us to really rethink the kinds of traditional government type of uh, public engagement that typically happens to really make this a something, something that people want to be involved in because it's a true way that they'll feel like their ideas will be heard and will shape the end goal of the citywide plan. And the last two here, accountability through shared metrics and transparency. You can't impact what you don't measure. So how do we have a sort of clear roadmap for the areas that we are seeking to change over time? And how are we transparent over time about our progress or lack thereof on elements of the citywide plan after it is adopted. Interagency across collaboration, I'll just note, you all know government, because it's such a massive enterprise can often operate in a silo. How are we using this plan itself to break down those silos and ensure that this is a truly whole of government approach to building a more equitable and resilient Chicago? And it's not government alone, this is a cross sector effort so how are we all building the same focus point on what we want Chicago to be in the next 10 to 15 years across community organizations, sectors, businesses, government, et cetera. Next slide. So what can a plan accomplish? Plans are very visionary documents that give you the pathway to think about a different future with each other. We are not scripting every single thing that's going to be in the plan. We're creating the containers for the research teams and the advisory committees to provide us with recommendations that hit on all five of these things and more throughout the planning process. So we know that the end document may lead to things such as standards for neighborhood and regional plans. It may lead to changes within budgets, capital projects, and policy priorities. It can lead to rethinking around public financing tools that are based in equity and resiliency. And we know that ultimately through this practice, we can rethink the way we do civic and community engagement in a way that's then replicable across government for how we really do uh, meet people where they are at a neighborhood level. Next slide. Our governance structure. So at the very, the, the middle of the slide here, you'll see the advisory council, which some of you may be interested in applying to that specific group. So the advisory council is made up of individual residents, as well as people that cross sectors from philanthropic, civic, private sector, community representatives, um, partners, artists, all of the above. Anyone in Chicago can apply to the advisory council to really help us shape the overarching framework of the plan to ensure that we're really living our values and those themes throughout the course of it and really be thinking from a bird's eye view across all of the pillars, what might we be missing that we need to really expand upon throughout this plan. The interagency committee on the right hand side as FYI is our version of that but for internal coordination across departments and sister agencies to break down silos and ensure that we're really maximizing communication about the plan 
to cast the widest net within all of our own networks. The research teams, many of you are interested in applying for those. That's why you're here today. So the research teams are going to be um, both members of city departments and sister agencies, but also private sector, philanthropy, civic um, organizations, community-based organizations, educators, aldermen, individual residents. Everyday residents of Chicago are invited to participate in both the research teams or the advisory council. The research teams, again, are going to be working on the seven pillars of the plan and developing a specific recommendation for one pillar that you're most interested in. If you're a, a, a transit lover, you might want to tap in most to the, it, the transportation and infrastructure research team. That's where your interests and passions lie. That would be the chapter that you would help us build out through the citywide planning process. We're also doing a call for community partners. So this could be coalitions of organizations or individual organizations that are going to help us really make sure that you're bringing in your broader constituency and community to help shape the city, the city planning process. And Kathy will talk more about some of the specific responsibilities of that group. The only other two pieces I'll note is that's not the, the end of our community engagement. We also have these two other circles on the right hand side. One is the artist organizer partners. So these have already been selected in neighborhoods uh, that span across the city, working with Honey Pop Performance uh, through DCAVE. This is a pairing of artists and community organizers that will be helping us maximize our reach in neighborhood level, really creative activations um, to engage people in shaping the citywide plan. And even if you can't be involved at a super, super deep level, and maybe after tonight, you're like, oh, that's a lot of work, but you still wanna shape the plan, there will be opportunities for you to shape the plan through virtual engagements and in-person events that you can attend as an attendee to truly help us co-create the end final plan document, which will be available for public comment at the very end of the planning process before it then goes to the plan commission of aldermen for approval, which you see in the upper right-hand corner. Next slide. Oh yeah, and that's a call out for these specific types of organizations that you all are probably most interested in applying for. So again, the opportunities are as individual volunteers or organizational volunteers or the, the paid community partner opportunities that Kathy will speak about. And I'll kick it to you, Kathy. All right, hello everyone. So this is what we're looking for. This is what we're doing and specifically tonight, um, you're all here just to get more details on, I believe, how to fill out the applications for either a volunteer or a community partner. So to give an idea of like the numbers and what will be happening in those conversations, right? So we have seven pillar research teams, about 15 um, volunteers we will be looking for, for the, so each, for each of the seven, and then the same number for an advisory council. So it, you saw, and um, Scott went over the, the, the principles, the themes, we, we will have conversations about historical reckoning and trust building. And those are gonna be hard conversations. Um, we have done a little work on um, planning. So we have plans that people will have to review. We don't expect um, the people involved in this to like read every plan. So we have categorized them and we will have a guide so that you at least can get familiar with the types of things. And like we've done, looked at city plans, but also all of the list plans and the other community plans that were not initiated by the city. So, and if we're missing anything, it, it will be one of your jobs to let us know. Um, we really do want a range of perspectives. And that's what we had in the pre-planning exercise as we had, um, you know, our individuals who were doing work in the community to, to people who ran an organization. And that kind of conversation with those kinds of perspectives is really what we're looking for. The lived experience, I kind of do it, I volunteer, that's my job. Um, so again, that's, we want all of that. We want passion for these specific topics. It seems like some of the harder questions on the application are really about you and what you are interested in, what you or your organization will bring to this initiative. So there are no minimum qualifications. It's really about, it's really about how you, your organization view the city and look and wanna think about the future. Next slide. 
Um, so for the vo so volunteers, so what are you going to have to do? Well, we're going to have a lot of Zoom meetings this summer and into the fall, about 90 minutes each, we think. So we're looking at least for like one a month. Now, there may be more, there may be breakouts, but one a month. So we would expect you to attend those. We will be providing some information to review. Um, and we think that would be helpful because it'll just help you engage in the conversation. Um, we already have um, ident um, secured trained facilitators. So we have some consultant, some consultant support for this work, both in training and running these meetings, and also to um, be able to um, get information for things that may come up in a research meeting, like, oh, I read about this in another city, and what about that? And so we will be able, we'll dig into some of that too, as we explore different kinds of things. We will have city representatives and by the pillar. So again, transportation, we'll have somebody from there. So we will bring in staff, um, both to provide um, their perspective information, and then just to kind of go back and keep, keep the agencies um, alerted to what the discussions are. We will record them, the research teams, um, but only the advisory committee meetings will be public and live stream. But if you're doing work with the city, you know, that is spoilable. So um, people will be able to look this up. Next slide. Um, so for the community partners and the paid participants, and we began paying participants with stipends just to participate in community conversations last year. And this year we want to expand that. So for organizations or coalitions, again, groups of people, um, however they're organized, um, we will we expect them to attend the meetings. We would also want them to host meetings with their constituencies. And actually just like city was paying stipends, we would want um, the organizations to play that pay their attendees too. Um, we're also thinking it's a good idea for these partners to maybe have conversations amongst themselves as to how this is going. How are how is this engagement working? Um, what are they learning and maybe what are they learning from each other? And then we would like um, the organization to publicize what they're hearing in whatever their forms of communication are, which, you know, if they have social media newsletters or whatever, however they do it. We're not going to dictate the, the way we would assume that you have a way of communicating with your, your constituents, your, your groups of people, and we would just want you to do that. Next slide. Uh, selection criteria. So, um, well, we really want a lot of people to apply, and that is going to be something we're going to have to we're going to have to go through lots of lots of applications. And we really are trying to get a very diverse um, section of uh, representation across the city and within each pillar. Um, we want to have as much representation, and that is across every way that you would want to see representation: race, interest, ability. So we'll be looking at that. Um, for volunteers, yes, we will be looking at, well, and for volunteers and for community, we will be looking at your ability and your ability, again, can be your volunteer ability or it's your organization ability um, to contribute to a citywide plan. And I just should stress here, we're really looking at like visions and principles and ways we should proceed. We're not at this point looking at specific projects, although your experience with a, a specific project probably um, uncovered some systems and other things that may need improvement. So that would be valuable information and valuable background. Next slide. So what makes a strong application? Well, if you've started to fill it out, we haven't given you a lot of room to write. So it's basically one paragraph, so keep it short and sweet, uh, looking for a wide variety of experiences and voices. And again, it's not just professional, it may be your volunteer, it may be where you live. We don't know, you need to explain that to us and, and um, we really are looking for a variety here. We do have a limited number of spots, 120 to 140, volunteers all together, and that does include the 14 volunteers. Um, you don't have to live in the city to volunteer, but um, we would expect that there's some reason that you are volunteering because you have some work or experience or other things in the city. And so again, that's for you to explain. Um, so you can submit your questions in the Q&A box and we will uh, answer them as best we can. Oh. So as you know, we, we <clears throat> you can, I, I'm assuming that most of you may have looked at the um, application online, but it's at, you can fill it out online. 
Um, we encourage you to register while you're filling online. Even if you don't finish the application, you'll still be able to get updates on everything we're doing. And then as other engagement opportunities um, evolve, you know, you may be interested in those. And we hope with COVID and, you know, with the um, vaccines and the new uh, guidances that we will be able to have activities in the neighborhoods um, with the artist organizer teams this summer. Um, next slide, I think this is it. Yes, and, unless we have questions and then we, we have one. Yes, yeah, so uh, we'll take a look in the question box. Uh, at, the question is, uh, is the volunteer application already live on the site? Yes, it is. We already have applications. We have a number of people already interested, which is great. Uh, this is a, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. Oh, it, just to note that um, it looks like Jamie responded. Um, there is a PDF version of the applications available on the website too. So that way you can take a look at it, think about your answers. And if you're like, mm, no, I got to go grocery shopping in 20 minutes, maybe wait. <laughs> but it's there for you. You can also save and return to your application as you're working through it. Um, so, you know, don't worry that you can't complete it on the first try. Uh, it'll be there when you come back. Yes, and I would say we, we wanted to make people think about this. So I, we thought, oh, 15 minutes, it may take longer. Um, because, and, but it, that, that longer might be, you know, thinking about how you might contribute to this initiative. Um, there's a question about the consultants. Uh, thanks for mentioning them. And uh, who are they and what firm will be leading these teams? Um, so we have, well, one is not quite done. We do have, I think we can say, we do have Mutes Consulting um, who worked with us in the pre-planning phase and they are the lead. And actually it's interesting. That's their first prime, load, uh, prime lead um, contract for them with the city. So they will be doing the organization of all of these meetings for us. Um, they will be the facilitators. And then they have another, a, a number of sub consultants. Um, I, we can, we will provide, we will post that information once it's all firmed up rather than me trying to kind of give parts of it right now. Thanks. Um, one of the question is with regards to diversity, how will we ensure all areas are represented fairly? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I'm happy to answer it two ways. So not sure if you're speaking about just community engagement or about the diversity of the people selected for the research teams and advisory committees. And I think both is critical for us to understand. We want to make sure that um, this plan is touching all community areas of Chicago. So we're going to really be mapping out where the artist organizer team is going to be doing their events. Where are the community-based organizations do, going to be doing their events? And then where's the gap that we can think about doing some mobile team that would be doing, you know, call for ideas related to the plan in those communities? Oh, Skylar, I think we lost your audio. Oh, we may have lost Skylar. It's connection. Kathy, do you want to continue? Sure. Um, oh, oh, there she is. She's back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you catch most of the first part? We le left you at mobile thing, workshop. Mobile teams, yes. To, uh, on the community engagement side, that's how we'll ensure that we have diversity and, and we're hearing the voices of Chicagoans from across the city. Um, and then on the specific research teams and the advisory committee, we do have a selection criteria that um, Kathy had mentioned that includes sort of identity across you know, race, ethnicity, sex, gender identity, um, passion and interest. Um, and then ability as well um, to make, and then we'll, as we're thinking about each of the individual pillars and research teams, ensuring that within each of those groups, we have a cross section of Chicagoans that sort of reflects as much as we can, knowing that there might be limitations in the pool of applicants um, as, as closely as we can, the sort of proportion of those uh, identities within Chicago, um, if not greater, because, um, you know, often those that have been marginalized and excluded from class planning practices, uh, we recognize the critical importance of making sure that those voices are at the table. Um, and so it will be very intentional in that. Thanks. Um, question is, does it make sense for organizations to make multiple applications for respective pillars? 
Um, well, we intentionally did not let you have a second choice. So if you want to do that, you can do that. I don't know whether it makes sense or not, um, but that's certainly an option for any one group. Um, will organizations that focus on area businesses such as local chambers of commerce or business associations be considered eligible to apply to be a community partner? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, Gabby, there, there is a question that I answered, but just we'll, we'll do it, we'll speak it. Um, the question was about submitting attachments, letters of support yeah, to the right. email address. And we're receiving you know, a lot of applications for this. And it's much easier if you can use the form to submit those letters of support. Um, if there's a problem using the form, we do have, we will um, at cityofchicago.org that you can also attach to. I'll, I'll, I'll add that to the chat. Okay. Um, so the plan will take three years. How will this initial one-year effort inform the three-year work plan? Well, I would say, and one of the things we'll look at is past, you know, past plans, but this is, this work is um, really to sort of like, let's look at the policies that we should be talking about. Let's look at the ideas we should be talking about, get some sort of consensus on those. And then in year two, we will really dig into, uh, dig into those more and actually how we would, would um, execute potentially on those. And I should say that we may um, want groups that apply now to fold in and to work in 2022, and we would structure it similarly. So that's just something to think about. So this is a three-year plan, um, but it is not, it's not a land use plan at this point. It's not gonna identify big projects. It's going to more identify how should we think about those big project projects? How should we allocate funding across the city for big projects? What is the process for identifying a big project and agreeing on those? Because we heard a lot about in the beginning, don't tell us what the big idea is. We wanna be part of deciding what that big idea is. So um, that's, that's sort of the, the, the level we're looking at. So really thinking about the future and how you want the future to unfold as a participant. Um, one of the questions is, how are the selection committee and uh, who is the selection committee and how are we going to ensure diversity in this committee to appreciate the value of non-traditional experiences? Really appreciate that question. Thank you for asking, Tiffany. Um, so our selection committee currently is made up of the three advisory committee co-chairs who have already been invited and selected for that role. Um, they represent sort of community, civic, and private sector industries. And there is a diversity of identities on that sort of group itself. We're then also layering on some internal staff that are in place, ready to go for this project, have all the background related to the needs. So we have the Department of Planning and Development team. We have the mayor's office team. We also have department liaisons across sister agencies and teams that are going to be part of the selection process. And will then also be members of your research team as sort of co-leads in that. Um, and so those are sort of issue experts within uh, things related to transportation or housing and neighborhoods. So they'll provide that lens as they're reviewing applications as well. Your question is about diversity within that group. That group is diverse across many, uh, a myriad of different identities. Um, and we feel strongly that it's a, a good core group um, that, that does reflect the diversity of Chicago in many different ways. We also recognize that um, there, are, there are conversations we will need to have as a grounding group and we have scheduled to have as a collective about how we think about um, ec uh, racial equity and diversity within the overall overarching framework and how we think about mitigating bias and anti-bias work within any selection process. Um, so that will be some grounding as we walk into this to ensure that, um, that those principles are first and foremost at the, at the head of it. Thank you. Um, my organization is planning to uh, apply as a community partner. Who shall we seek letters of support, support from? Uh, who do you define as a partner? Um, well, I would say the community partners, it's gonna be defined in your application, right? So we're not saying you have to be a 501c3 and you have to be one organization. We are leaving it up to you to define that. Um, and again, that could be a coalition. Um, so that's not necessarily an incorporated organization. Um, and we don't have a requirement for letters of support. So I think that's really up to you 
and I would I would think that you want people that support what you're saying that you're going to bring to the table. And so, yeah, I would say I would think a strong application would be a partner that could validate your, you know, interest, passion. And, you know, if you've done past sort of community engagement work or work that sort of speaks to your interest in that area, if they're a validator and a cheerleader for you around that, it would be a great person to add to your letter of support. You could think about it even informally, right? Your neighbor who you have a great relationship with, like we are being very expansive about how we define sort of the right person to, to uh, write one of those optional letters. Great. Um, how will you ensure funding will be available for all projects? Is there a risk of not all projects being finalized? Um, I think this is the funding specifically for this, uh, these community partners has already been allocated, correct? Yes, we have that. The funding for the community partners is, is in place. So I don't think that's an issue. If you're talking about things we that are identified in the plan, that's a whole different issue. And we're really not at that phase. I mean, because we're going to be talking about how should projects be funded, what projects should be funded. But yeah, for the community partners, we are, we are ready to go. Um, may we apply uh, for or be considered for more than one research area? You can. Uh, yes, I mean, make the case. But yeah, those so wouldn't require separate mm -hmm. applications. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, everyday resident, uh, one that is not degreed, yet is motivated to make the community better be eligible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, awesome. Um, what are the dates and times of the meetings uh, to make sure we can participate first? Yeah, so in the application, we actually ask a question about your standard av availability to get a sense of what your preference would be for weekday, day of the week, weeknight. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll make the selections uh, regardless of that availability. And then we'll look at the general uh, trends that have come from all of the participants and then make decisions about like the standard day of the week. Um, that the meetings will be convened. There may be a number of doodles that go out <laughs> depending well, on. Well, <laughs> I don't know that we're gonna doodle, <laughs> but um, yeah, we haven't set the schedule yet, but we do wanna see, you know, as Skylar said, if most people are available in the evenings, well, then we're gonna have a lot of meetings in the evenings. Okay, uh, there was a question about uh, what is the application deadline? Uh, the end of Memorial Day. May 31st. So you can talk about it with your neighbors <laughs> at your black party. Wonderful. Um, are there any additional questions that uh, from the group or anything you'd like us to address? Seems like we're... Maybe we'll just hang on for a couple yeah. more minutes in case folks are writing. Um, and just also note that uh, we will put up a copy of this uh, webinar on the website and tomorrow's webinar uh, where, you know, there may be similar questions asked. Uh, the content that we're pre presenting will be the same, um, but both will be available on the We Will website uh, once we're done with all of these. Yeah, and if you haven't had a chance yet, we also had a public launch event on April 29th where we had a number of speakers and panelists talk about different facets of the plan. Some of them really went in depth about um, the artist organizer teams and the theme of historical reckoning and our racial equity work with Candace Moore. So if you're curious, that's also available on the website and on the DPD YouTube channel as well. Um, and if you didn't get a chance to ask a question here, you can always email we will at cityofchicago.org um, and we will forward it to the appropriate parties. Uh, here's one more. Um, if multiple community partners from the same geographical area apply but differ ethnically, how will one be determined? Um, I think we'll be looking at everything that comes in. Well, first of all, are they all applying in the same pillar? Uh, so that'll make a difference. I think that's gonna be one of our first cuts is like, who's all applying for a pillar? So um, maybe they won't all apply for the pillar. Um, 
we're, but again, we're looking for diversity within each pillar. So it's going to really depend on the other applications, mm -hmm. I would say, but what's in a pillar. And just on the pillars, I would encourage everybody, if you have not, to look at the brief write-ups and the results of the conversations we had about those back in the fall um, as to what, what people have already been saying about how they think about these different issues. Right. Um, there was another question. Uh, how many applications do we anticipate receiving, both for <laughs> community partners and individuals? I guess it depends uh, on how successful our tweets are and how many people <laughs> retweet them. Um, right now we have about, I think, 150 across each of the categories, roughly as an estimate. We know that a lot of people fill it out last minute, so it could be a very large, um, a very large pool that we're unable to predict now. If I had to wager, maybe 500 each, but we'll see. I would love to be pleasantly surprised to ensure that you know, we're really casting a super wide net um, and getting the word out about this opportunity. So that said, you know, if you know of people that haven't heard about the citywide plan and you want to share it via email or text um, or even on social media, if you do that, we would greatly appreciate it because the quality of this plan is really going to be driven by the representativeness and the passions of the people involved, which are you all who are here tonight and the network. And we want to reiterate too that there, you know, there are a limited number of spots to participate in these specific research teams and community partners. But there will be more opportunities available for engagement um, throughout the summer and fall. Um, so stay tuned. Register on the We Will website. You can create a profile there, um, and we will subscribe you to keep getting uh, email updates uh, as this process goes forward. And any other opportunities we have, we will, you know, you'll be made aware of. Correct. Looks like there's one question from Kenneth Newman. He says, uh, I think many people who didn't grow up in the city might not know many of the issues. I did. I certainly want to be on one of these committees. Will the groups be working on athletic facility issues? Well, yeah, I, I think go ahead. Oh, I was just going to note that um, def, uh, Kenneth, appreciate your question. Also appreciate your lifelong residency in Chicago. Uh, we do know that like there will be people that might be new, fresh faces to Chicago. We value them as participants. We also value lifelong residents. Um, and we, are, we would uh, love to have your application as part of this process. It feels like maybe some of your interests might be aligned with the public health and wellness uh, pillar. That said, I'm sure that stretches across different sort of research teams. So maybe you have a different idea in mind. One thing I'll note, and generally has been our answer, if there are specific types of policies or priorities that you might have, those are great things to bring to the research team to help inform uh, the overall direction of that work. At this time, we don't have a checklist of everything we know is gonna be addressed in the plan. Again, we're really creating the container for ideas to be shared amongst all the people in these groups and amongst everyday Chicagoans through our neighborhood activations and virtual events. And then thus to collectively we'll land on our final recommendations. Um, there's a question uh, for economic development. Are you looking at groups that have sector specific experience such as manufacturing or food-based businesses? I, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, all, you know, groups that have that and the sectors are very important so yes to both yeah I'll just yeah. Know, I <laughs> yes know we, and yes <laughs> because food about, is one of our bigger sectors yeah we talked about sort of general categories of community-based organization civic organization and private sector we recognize that there's like so much nuance within those categories and we really want to ensure that like each of the the pillars has a good strong cross-section of um, that nuance across the sectors too. And I would say, maybe I think I know who asked that question, um, that it, you know, there are a number of groups that deal with the sectors of manufacturing in Chicago and perhaps like a coalition of them or some representation would be very beneficial, especially since we also know that the industrial corridors are throughout the city. Oh, sure. Do, do you want us to call on them, Gabby, or do you, I don't see why not. Uh, 
sure. It, there were a few folks who had, oh, wait, uh, there's another um, question here. Uh, will research team members, committees be able to receive input from their neighbors, community members directly? Will they get emails or other ways of interacting with them? Well, I would say we encourage input from your neighbors and other groups that you work with, but I, I'm not quite sure on the second part. Uh, I guess as, as the research teams progress, you know, are they going to be providing surveys or tools that uh, they can out, you know, do more additional research or um, outreach uh, as decided by the research team? I think, I think that's something that we're talking about. The idea, I think we, you've been talking to Gabby with others about um, on the, developing these other tools. So we have just talked in general about how can we provide some of those tools for aldermen. So yeah, we can definitely discuss that in the research teams. And if that's something that we think we need would be beneficial to what the discussion is, we could certainly do that kind of thing. Yeah, it looks like I also got a direct message from one of our um, organizers of the event at the Metropolitan Planning Council that I wanted to touch on. So um, she was asking, can community partners, do they have to apply individually or can they apply as a network of organizations? Um, so yes, um, coalitions of organizations or networks of organizations can definitely apply. You don't just have to be one single organization. So you'll see the language about coalition and network on the application when you open it up for a community partner. Um, and we know that there's a limited number of spots. So those that would actually be a great sort of use of the spots, those sort of linkage points to these broader networks for us to truly maximize the amount of uh, input that we're receiving from these critical stakeholders. Yeah, I would second that and also just think about um, that absolutely a coalition and then some one of those organizations would need to be the recipient of the funding to then work with the rest of your partners. So you would want to identify that. Um, but yeah, I think again, yeah, coalitions would be great. There's a couple hands that are up. Kenneth Newman, I believe we answered your question. There's Beth Dibala. And um, if somebody, I, I don't know if we want to un unmute Beth or how that would work if we want to let her ask the question. Hi, Beth. Hi. Yeah, I have no questions. I must have excellent questions. So sorry. No, thank you for being here. Hi, Beth. Great. Um, were there any additional questions that you wanted us to address uh, at this time? Give you a couple seconds there. Uh, if not, again, or if you want to follow up individually, you can email us at, at we will at cityofchicago.org uh, and uh, we will get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for being here. Thank you for your interest in the citywide plan. We hope we'll have the opportunity to collaborate with you either through these formal roles or for the neighborhood events that we can look forward to seeing each other in person around at some point in 2021 to help shape the citywide plan. Thank you again for being here. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you all so much. Thank Bye. you. Thanks you guys. Look forward to the applications.